especially for you. Hallelujah. This is a special day. Hallelujah. He made it for us to praise him. Hallelujah. You ought to give him praise. This is the day that the Lord has made.
got to keep you guys informed on what's going on. Um, first thing I'd like to thank the visitors for coming to Spirit and Truth today. If you're a visitor here, we don't make you raise hands. We don't make you do anything. We don't want to embarrass you. We just want to say welcome to Spirit and Truth Worship Center where we do things a little bit different. We, we worship Jesus in spirit and in truth, which means you feel free to do whatever it is you feel like doing. If you feel like raising your hands, you raise your hands. If you feel like singing, sing. If you feel like dancing, dance. Whatever God puts on your heart, that's the uh, truth part of Spirit and Truth, from the heart. Amen. So welcome to all of our visitors. We hope you uh, are blessed today, and we hope you leave better than when you showed up. Amen. The ladies that are going on the retreat to Boone, November 11th, will need to meet in the kitchen right after service to go over some final details. And we now have an offering box located at the back of the sanctuary. It is the box right underneath the light switch back there. Um, just in case you weren't able to get here in time to get your offering as you're leaving, um, you can drop it off. It's a locked, secure box, so you just lift up the lid and drop it in. Um, and you don't have to worry about anybody stealing it. Amen. Um, November 16th, we will have, we're going to bring back the F3 service um, for Thanksgiving. Amen. We all have a lot of things to be thankful for. Amen. So start getting your recipes ready as we will all bring a covered dish that evening and join together for a meal and fellowship in the Lord. Amen. At this time, I want to ask the ushers to go ahead and come for the morning tithe and offerings, and you guys may come as you feel led. Amen.
thankful to still be serving a healing God this morning. Let's put your hands together. Like the song Brother John just sang, one of them was, you're my healer, you're my deliverer. I think sometimes, again, we get frustrated if we don't see immediate results. But we all know, some of us that have been together for a while now, even at a former church, we know we've seen with our eyes miracles happen. When the Spirit of God starts to move in a room, we know. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're going to get your healing that you necessarily want. Okay, it doesn't mean that Jesus is not a healer. Um, we have seen it with our own eyes once the Spirit of God begins to move that He still is a healer. And, and not the healing part that where He uses doctor's hands to heal people. I believe in that. But simply a miraculous healing right then, right there. We have seen it with our own eyes. And I'm thankful today that we're still serving a healing God. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging seas. You walk with me through fire. And you heal all my disease. I trust. Than enough than 
what we need. Nothing too big, nothing too small. Don't be scared to go to the Lord and just pray and ask. You should, you should be, you should be praying for this country right now. Don't, don't feel weird. Lord, touch this country. Prick somebody's heart in government to turn back. Somebody asked me the other day, what, I mean, why do you think it's gotten so bad? We were founded on Bibles and guns. I know that's a, a, what people are saying, Bibles and guns, the Southerners. That's what our forefathers, our forefathers believed in God. Most of our historical documents have God in them. Amen. Pray for this country because nothing is impossible for our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. business hallelujah and he should be praised how many of y'all don't 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 go crazy if, if you don't it's okay but how many just all day long just just love praising them just just I mean in your in your car driving to work whatever radio station you prefer WBFJ there's a great one in Charlotte just singing his praises how many of you have it on at work listening to it at the office just praising them. It's just like you feel like that's what I was made to do just all day long. Just wake up and praise Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a lady by the name of Fanny Crosby who wrote over 8,000 hymns in her lifetime. She wrote this wonderful hymn, Blessed Assurance. I think it was somewhere in the late 1800s. Um, a friend of hers that wrote music played, sat down and played at the piano and she asked Fanny, she's like, what is this, what is this tune saying? She said, she knelt down and prayed for a while. And when she got done praying, it was, the first verse of this song came out. The rest of the song was later written, but the first verse said, the Lord told me this is what that tune is saying. She, she, she praised God every day, writing over 8,000 hymns. She was blind at six weeks. She'd been blind her whole life. And she just felt like getting up every morning and praising God and writing hymns. So, I mean, my goodness, if she can do it, 
we can do it. She's, I mean, we all have our sight. You know, hallelujah. This is an old, old hymn, oldie but goodie, but it's got some very, very deep lyrics. Y'all help us sing it today. It's called Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of Beautiful. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story.
Let's just keep praising him every day. Amen. you a story this morning. We're overcome by the word of our testimony. Praise God. Let's give God one more hand of praise this morning. Right where you're standing, if you would, just grab your Bibles. We're going to stand. We're going to read. Word and we're going to pray. I like what I feel in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. We've been having some awesome church here at Spirit and Truth Worship Center. Amen. We showed up for Wednesday night Bible study this Wednesday and God just wrecked the place. We couldn't even have preaching. Amen. God just moved. recently diagnosed with cancer and she's not doing very well. Uh, Brother Jamie's the chairman of our board here at Spirit and Truth Worship Center. He is with his mother this morning. So let's pray for him. Let's pray for his mother. We just sang a song that God is our healer. Amen. How many believe that he's a healer today? Let's pray that, that God would heal Sandy's body and strengthen her. Let's remember Sister uh, Tiffany Smith um, this morning grandmother this week, kind of suddenly and unexpectedly. Uh, let's pray for her and her family that God would, would give them strength as well. Let's read some scripture here and we're going to pray. John chapter 3 and verse 7. This is Jesus speaking to a Pharisee, uh, a ruler of the Jews by the name of Nicodemus. He says, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. For the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. Kind of like what we've felt here in the house this morning. The wind of God sometimes just has a way of coming into service, and you don't know where it comes from, and you don't know where it's going. It just comes into the service and just takes control. Jesus says the wind blows where it wants to. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes. You don't know where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. I'm going to flip over to John chapter 20 real quick and read just a couple more verses and tie these chapters in together. John 20 and 21. Jesus said to them again, speaking to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Somebody just say those words with me. Receive the Holy Spirit. Don't go to sleep on me now. You've been worshiping on your time. It's my time now. Let's worship the Lord in this place together. God's got something to say this morning. Everybody wake back up and give God some praise in this room this morning for he's worthy. He's worthy of the glory and the honor. your neighbor by the hand, stretch that hand toward heaven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this atmosphere this morning. God, we declare that where your spirit is, where your presence is, God, there's liberty, there's freedom. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your word. 
God, we just pray that you speak to us today. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds right now to receive a word from you. Father, we pray, God, a special prayer right now for Sister Tiffany Smith and her family. I pray, God, that you would strengthen them this morning, that your peace, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding would be with Tiffany, God, and her aunts and uncles, and that you would just give them strength today. Father, we pray a special prayer, God, for Brother Jamie Brewer, God, for his mother, Sandy, that you would just bring healing right now, God, into her body where she is. God, I just pray that you would strengthen this woman, God, in the name of Jesus, where the doctors are given not much hope, God, we declare that you are our hope, God. In Jesus' name, we trust in you. We lean not to our own understanding, God. And Father, we just give the remainder of this service to you. Have your way in this place. Speak to us, and we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. One final time before you're seated, give him a great praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. Amen. So stay with me now because I'm not going to preach long. It's important that you hear what I have to say. In John chapter 3, Jesus speaks to Nicodemus. And he tells Nicodemus, he talks to Nicodemus about being born of the Spirit. Being born of the Spirit. And then in John chapter 20, he tells his disciples, the Bible says he breathes on them. And he tells them to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want to talk about that for a few minutes today, about the power of the Holy Spirit. Today I feel led to do something a little different, something that I do not normally do when I preach. Every week I preach to you guys and I pride myself on preparing messages that apply to the entire body of Christ. Um, I don't like to preach messages that are for some and not for everybody. I really do every week try and prepare a message that is for the entire body of Christ, whether you've been in church for a week, whether you've been in church for 30 years, whether you're white, black, rich, poor, doesn't matter. I, I like to preach practical messages that are for everyone, but that's not what I feel led to do today. I feel led to speak this morning to new converts. I feel led to speak this morning to uh, new Christians, uh, new church members, people who um, who are just starting out maybe in your walk with God because we have plenty of people in this room this morning that are new to the uh, apostolic experience, if you will. And um, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes today. And, you know, I was born and raised um, going on 33 years now, a Pentecostal apostolic environment is all I've ever known. When I was Marley's age, three years old, I was watching people run around the church, shout, dance, speak in tongues, be slain in the spirit, prophesy. Prayer lines were a common thing when I grew up. People being healed, God moving in a mighty way, the gifts of the spirit flowing. And so that's never been strange to me. That's never been uh, you know, unacceptable behavior to me in the church. It, it's the normal. It's what I'm used to. But not everybody is, has the same background that I have. And there are people in this room, uh, even this morning, that when the Holy Spirit comes into a church service, even like it did today, and it begins to manifest itself and show itself in certain ways, um, I'm speaking to people this morning that it may confuse you. It, it may perplex you. It may even scare you. And I want to say to you, that's okay. That's perfectly all right to get nervous in the service when the Holy Ghost begins to move. The Bible says that there was a man one day in the book of Acts, he was pulled over on the side of the road, and the Scripture said he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Scripture said the apostle Philip was walking by, and he saw this man reading the Bible. And he looked over at, at the man, the eunuch, and he said to him, he said, Sir, do you understand what you're reading? And notice what the eunuch's response was. He said, how can I understand unless somebody help me understand? 
How can I understand the word of God? How can I understand the things of God? How can I understand the spirit of God unless there's someone to teach me and help me understand these things? That's what I'm here for this morning. I want to help you understand the spirit of God when it begins to move. Because in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost fell in the upper room. For the first time, 120 people that God hand-selected on this earth was introduced to the Holy Ghost for the first time ever. The power of the Holy Spirit. And your Bible lets us know that there were people on the outside of the upper room because there was only 120 gathered in the upper room. But there were people on the outside that watched what was taking place in the upper room service on the day of Pentecost and they began to scratch their heads and they got confused and they looked at the way these people were acting. They, they noticed the way the Holy Spirit was manifesting itself and the only conclusion that they could come to was these people have to be drunk. They're acting crazy. It's it's morning time is what they said and they're already wasted. They're already plastered. It's 9 o'clock in the morning and they've already be, been drinking. What's wrong with these people? And you know what? I grew up in church all my life. I've heard the critics that were on the outside of the upper room. I've heard preachers preach them like they're bad people or something. I, I've seen us... I've seen We've even done plays in church where, where people were on the outside of the upper room and they were saying, what meaneth this? These people are drunk and all this stuff. And we've made the critics out to be bad people over the years. But you know what? They weren't bad people. They just had never seen a manifestation of the Holy Ghost before. They did not know what they were observing. They did not understand what they were looking at. And the only thing they could say, what does this mean? Why are they acting like this? They didn't know what they were looking at, but all they could, the only conclusion they could come to is these people have to be drunk. They're acting like they're drunk, which is exactly how some of you act when the Holy Spirit begins to fall on you. Oh, you don't want to admit it, but some of you act crazy when the Holy Ghost begins to move. When the Holy Spirit begins to manifest itself, I love what the Apostle Paul told the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 when he said, Do not be drunk with wine, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you know why that scripture is in your Bible? Let me help somebody this morning. The Ephesians, there's a reason why Paul said this to the Ephesians. Do not be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know why Paul said this to the Ephesians? Here's why. Go back and study the Ephesians. They had a drinking problem. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. I don't care how you look at me. They drank too much. Go back and study the Ephesians. This is how the Ephesians lived. They said the only way we can have true peace in our life, the only way we can experience real joy and real happiness in life is to not be sober. We've got to get drunk out of our minds, and when we get drunk, we'll be happy, we'll be merry, we'll have a good time. But Paul told them, you don't understand when the Holy Spirit gets on you, if you'll yield to it, if you'll surrender to it, if you'll allow the Holy Spirit to take control over your life, the Holy Spirit will do for you what alcohol cannot do for you. This is what Paul was telling the Ephesians. You can get drunk, just not on wine. Get drunk on the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Get drunk on the Spirit. I was thinking this week, that it's kind of weird because if you take a Holy Ghost anointed church service, I'm talking about a fiery, you know, old school anointed church service, and then you take like the party club scene of the world. In a weird way, they're very similar. If you go out to the party or the club, which I don't recommend you doing in Jesus' name, but you may see people getting carried out of there. 
People drunk out of their mind, wasted. They can't drive. They can't talk. They're slurring their words. I've been in church services like that. I've been in church services where we had to carry people out of the building because they were so drunk on the Holy Ghost, they couldn't drive, they couldn't talk. And you know what? We think it's acceptable behavior to go to the club and get drunk on wine, but the moment we come to an apostolic church and get drunk on the Holy Spirit, we call that, oh, that's weird, that's spooky. And so, there are different, let me just teach for a moment. There are different manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Some people, when the Spirit moves on them, they're moved to tears. We got some crybabies in this church. I mean, there are some people that just cry at anything. We'll be singing songs that it don't even make sense to cry to. And, oh, I am a friend. Oh, I mean, the Spirit just moves on people. And some people are just moved to tears, and that's okay. I'm not making fun of you if you cry. That's great. That's awesome. Some pe- We got... Man, we got some running backs in this church. Some people, when the Holy Spirit begin to move, you better look out because they will run you over in the house of God. We've got some runners. Some people, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a leaper. Uh, we, we sing that song, when I think of his goodness, I can dance, dance, dance. Well, I added that verse. That was me. I wrote that part. When I think of his goodness, I can leap, leap, leap because, you know, I, I hadn't danced in a long time, but I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm more of a leaper. Some people begin to leap when the Holy Spirit moves on. Some people shout. Some people dance. There's different manifestations of the Holy Spirit, but listen to me for a moment. There is one common manifestation that we all share Everyone that has received the Holy Spirit in its fullness, everyone who has been filled, who has been born of the Holy Spirit, there is one common presentation, one common manifestation that every one of us share. When you are born of the Spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit in its fullness, you will speak in an unknown language. You will speak in an unknown language tongue. Now I need to teach this for a moment. If you've been in church for 30 years and you already know this, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the new converts, the new Christians. That's who this is for today. But there's been some confusion over the years on this subject. Somebody sent me a video video not that long ago of this pastor, a a well-renowned pastor. He was preaching and he was talking about 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 and he was talking about the nine gifts of the Spirit that the Bible lists, and he was talking specifically about the gifts of tongues and the gifts of tongues and interpretation. Because we don't talk about that much. We always talk about the tongues and interpretation, but the Bible says there's a gift of tongues, and then there's a gift of tongues and interpretation. There's a difference in those. And this preacher, this pastor was talking about this, and and he was talking about the Holy Spirit being poured out in the Gospels and, and, and when the Bible mentions the Holy Spirit. And this pastor was saying that the Holy Spirit in speaking in an unknown language and the gift of tongues and interpretation was the same exact thing. Wrong. Let me help somebody for a moment. Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, he talked about, he lists the nine gifts of the Spirit And he said, there is a gift of the Spirit that is for the edification of the church and it's called tongues and interpretation. But here's what you need to know about this gift. Not everybody has it. As a matter of fact, let me go a step further. 95% of people do not possess this gift. That scared me, but I'm going to preach on in Jesus' name. 95% of people do not have the gift of tongues or the gift of tongues and interpretation. But speaking in another language when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost is something completely different. Let me try to explain what I mean. The church I grew up in, I was born and raised. I spent the first 25 years of my life. There was a woman. Some of you remember her. She operated fluently, and 
articulately, if that's, if that's a word, if I'm saying that right, my high school education is showing itself now, but she operated heavily under the anointing of tongues and interpretation. There would be services and she, where she would give a message in tongues and then she would interpret it and she was never out of order. She never did it at the wrong time. I've heard people try to give tongues interpretation. They stumble over their words. They're stuttering. They're making mistakes. That, that's not God. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't confuse things. God doesn't stutter. He doesn't stumble over his words. This woman, she would project her voice, and it would always be at the right time, and she would give a message clearly in tongues, and then there would be about a 15-second pause, and she would give the interpretation to that message. And every time she did, the church would be edified, the church would be strengthened, the church would receive a word from the Lord, and it was a great thing. And then there were times where she would project her voice and she would give a message in tongues, but she didn't have the interpretation. Someone else in the service had the interpretation. This is the gift of tongues and the gift of tongues and interpretation. This is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit that Paul talks about in the the book of Corinthians, but this is not the Holy Ghost. This is something different. And so, not everybody has the gift of tongues and interpretation, and Paul addressed this to the Corinthians. He told them that if you have the gift of tongues, if you have the gift of tongues and interpretation, it is for the edification and the uplifting of the church. And this is what Paul said. Go back and read it. He said, if you give a message in tongues to the church, but you don't have an interpretation for it, or someone else doesn't have an interpretation for what you're saying, you're out of order. Quit screaming. Man, I, I grew up listening to this preacher. God bless him. He'd preach for 30 seconds, and then he'd just, he just start speaking in tongues. The Bible says, The Bible says, and, 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 and I was like, dude, what are you talking about? You're not saying nothing. You're not edifying the church. He'd have a 15-minute message, and it'd take him an hour and a half to preach it because all he did was speak in tongues. Some of y'all are looking at me. Some of you church Pentecostal folk are looking at me weird, but... Tongues and interpretation is for the edification of the church. If you don't have an interpretation for what you're speaking in tongues, quit talking about it to everybody. Because tongues and interpretation is for the church publicly. But the Holy Spirit is for you privately and personally. Somebody said amen. I'm talking to you about two completely different things. The gift of tongues is for the edification of the church, but the Holy Spirit is for you personally in your private prayer life. Because you take on an authority and a power when you pray in the Holy Ghost privately that you don't have without the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, Paul said, Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we all ought, but the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings. Watch this. That cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So Paul says when you receive the Holy Spirit, there will be times when you pray and the Spirit will take over and intercede for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. This is what the Holy Spirit does. When you don't know what to pray for, there's an unknown language. When you don't know what to say, there is an unknown tongue that begin to, begins to pray through you, begins to intercede for you, and that is the power of the Holy Ghost. I heard this story a couple weeks ago in the news. Man, I've been watching the news. Y'all pray for me. I, I can't stop watching the news. If you've missed anything in the news lately, come see me after service. I'll let you know what's going on. But I was watching the news the other night, and they were, other morning, they were talking about this, this young boy who plays soccer that shot the world. Maybe you heard about this because this young boy... He's like 12 or 13 years old, 
he had suffered about two or three different concussions playing soccer. And a few weeks ago, or maybe a couple months ago, he was playing soccer and he suffered another serious head injury. And he went into a coma for like three days. This is what they said on the news. They said when he woke up from the coma, he was speaking fluent Spanish. He had never spoke Spanish in his life. He'd never been trained in Spanish, never been educated. But he was speaking fluent Spanish, and it shocked everyone. It shocked the media. It shocked the doctors. Nobody had a good explanation for this other than there was some nerve in his brain that was being pressed upon, and when that nerve was, was injured and it suffered pressure, all of a sudden this boy could speak Spanish. He knew Spanish but then they said his mind started healing, his brain started healing. And as his brain started healing, he couldn't speak Spanish anymore and English came back. And this is what they said. They said, we, we don't understand this. We, we, we can't explain this. How in the world could this boy speak in a language that he's never spoken before, that he's never been trained in? We don't understand this. We've never seen anything like this is what they were saying on the news. But you know what? They must not be Bible readers because this has happened before. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that when the day of Pentecost had come, you know the story. They were gathered in the upper room. They were praying. They begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. But I want to talk about the back half of Acts chapter 2 that we never talk about. The Bible says that there were men in Jerusalem that were devout Jews. They were from every nation under heaven is what Scripture said. And when they heard the sound of them in the upper room speaking in tongues, the Bible says that the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard the people in the upper room speak in his own language. Languages that they had never been trained in. Languages that they never learned. And the Bible says these devout men, these educated men that were from all over the world, they were all amazed and they marveled, saying one to another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? How is it possible that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? There were dwelling in Jerusalem devout Jews they were devout men from all over the world. They've traveled from all over the world to celebrate the Feast of Passover. Now it's 50 days later and they're celebrating Pentecost. Devout men from many different nations. And your Bible says when the baptism of the Holy Spirit was poured out in the upper room for the first time, they heard the disciples because the scripture said the disciples were in the upper room. They heard Mary, the mother of Jesus, because the Bible says she was in there. They heard James, the brother of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 says he was there. They heard them speaking in their own language, and they couldn't comprehend it. They heard the disciples speaking the wonderful works of God in their language. They were speaking in an unknown tongue. I want to go back to our text, the first scripture I read to you this morning, John chapter 3, verse 8. Jesus said, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now watch this, because I'm going to tell you this quick story, and I'm finished this morning, but watch this. Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus. Go back and read John chapter 3, because it gets a little confusing. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and he tells him a man must be born again if he wants to go to heaven. Nicodemus, you know the story, says how can this be possible unless a man go back and, and re-enter his mother's womb? No, Jesus says a man must be born of the water and the spirit. A man must be uh, born in the flesh and the spirit if he wants to see the kingdom of heaven. And then he's having this conversation with Nicodemus about salvation and about being born again and out of nowhere... This makes no sense. Jesus says, and oh, by the way, the wind blows where it wants to. And you hear it sound, and you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Can you imagine if I was up here this morning and I was telling you, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name? 
You need to repent of your sins. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to live a life that's pleasing to God because, you know, the wind just blows where it wants to. People hear the sound. They don't know where it's coming from. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know what? The Greek word in this verse for wind is Holy Spirit. And the Greek word for the word sound in this verse is a word called phone. I know that sounds weird, but phone in the Greek means a language or tongue. So in other words, when we read the scripture in our King James Version, when we read the scripture in our ESV or whatever it is you read, this is what we read. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear it sound, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going, so it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. But this is what the scripture said in its original text. In its original language, this verse read like this. The Holy Spirit blows where it wishes and you hear its language or its tongue, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. He was telling Nicodemus, when the Holy Spirit blows on you, there will be a language. There will be a tongue when the Holy Spirit blows on you and when that language comes, you'll look around because you won't know where it came from. You won't know where it's going. But this is what Jesus told Nicodemus. This is how it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will blow on them. There will be a language. There will be a tongue that they've never spoken before. And it goes this way with everyone who is born of the Spirit. I didn't say that. That's what Jesus said. I'm telling you, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in its fullness, when you are truly born of the Spirit, you will speak in a language that you have never learned. How have we fallen from this? Why have we taken tongues out of the salvation experience in our modern day churches? Why do we underemphasize the power of the Holy Ghost? Why do we underemphasize speaking in an unknown tongue in our churches? People say, oh, that's, that's because it's weird. That tongue stuff is spooky. Let me tell you what's spooky. Halloween is spooky. Let me tell you what's weird. Halloween is weird, and we got church people all over the world that's going to celebrate it. Don't talk to me about how tongues is weird. Tongues is not a Pentecostal thing. Tongues is not an apostolic thing. Tongues is a Bible thing. Tongues is a God thing. And Jesus said, every man that is born of the Spirit will speak in an unknown language. I'm not that preacher from the mountains with rattlesnakes. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. I missed a service just a couple months ago. We were out of town and somebody told me they found a snake in the church while, while I was gone. You know why it was in the church? Because I wasn't here. <clears throat> Get the snakes out of the church in Jesus' name. Don't put tongues in the category with that kind of stuff. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. You can't take that out of your Bible. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, Desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. And you know what he said after that? He said, as a matter of fact, I thank God. I speak in tongues more than anybody. That's what Paul said, chief of the apostles. I speak in tongues more than anyone. There is a power that comes over you. There is an authority that comes over you when you begin to speak in this unknown language. It is the power of the Holy Spirit speaking through you. And I'm finished this morning. I'm done. As the church stands, this is what the Lord put on my spirit this week. He said, don't put the emphasis on preaching. Put the emphasis on the altar service. And that's what we're going to do this morning.
This is what I want to say. I need everyone to get real still for just a minute, all right? I need everyone to get real still and look up here at me because this is important. We're talking about heaven or hell here. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There is nothing else on your agenda that you've got scheduled for today that's more important than what's fixing to happen next. This is what I want to say. This is what the Lord put on my heart this week for any and every individual. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, white, black, rich, poor, doesn't matter. Anyone in this service that has never received the Holy Spirit, never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you've never spoke in that unknown language that I'm talking about this morning. This is what the Lord put on my spirit to tell you this week. It's up to you. All I can do is preach it, and all I can do is tell you about it. But you got to want it. You got to pursue it. This is what the Lord put on my spirit this week. He said, tell those who have not received the Holy Ghost, they have to pursue it with passion. I thought this week about a show that me and Danielle used to watch a lot. We don't watch it much anymore, but Cops. Anybody ever watch Cops? And I was thinking about how these cops, they would, they would bring you in on the pursuit. And, and they would invite you in. They'd put the camera on them. And, and they'd be chasing down a criminal, a theft, you know, a murder or whatever, a, a, a drug addict. And they would not stop. It was a relentless pursuit. They would not stop in their pursuit of catching that criminal until they caught them. They would not be satisfied until they captured the bad guy. They didn't say in the middle of the pursuit, well, my shift is over now. I'm going to go home and let somebody else take care of this. Well, I'm going to take a break, eat some lunch. No, they would not be at peace and they would not be satisfied until they captured that criminal. That's how you need to get over the Holy Ghost. You should, if you don't have the Holy Ghost this morning, I'm telling you this message is for you. You should not leave here satisfied. You should not leave here at peace if you have not been baptized with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I want to show you one more thing. I'm almost finished. Luke, will you come up here with me just a minute? Let's give Luke a hand. Come on up here with me, man. Hold my hand, will you? This is what the devil would want anyone in this room to think that doesn't have the Holy Ghost. It's way out there somewhere. It's so hard to get the Holy Ghost. If I go up there to the altar and I seek the Holy Ghost, I got to pray. We're going to be here for hours. We're going to be here all day. I'm going to exhaust myself. People are going to be looking at me. It's an impossible task to get. That's what the devil wants to make you think. But you know what? Earlier, about two weeks ago, this little boy right here was in a prayer meeting in his home. He just lifted his hands, lifted his voice, and surrendered his heart to God, and God filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. And there's a video to prove it. You can go sit down. Please. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. It's that easy. It's not complicated. If you don't have the Holy Ghost this morning, it's time. We don't have to delay. We don't have to be here for hours. If you have yet to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning, just come up here and get it in Jesus' name. The promise is yours. But here it is. Here's the kicker. You got to pursue it with passion. You got to want it. You got to desire it. You got to act like there's a hundred billion dollars laying on this altar. You imagine how you would act if there was a hundred million dollars stretched out over this altar and I told you just come up here and get it. You'd run, you'd pursue it with passion, you'd be so excited, you'd pass out. What I'm offering you today, what God is offering you today, darling, it is greater, it has more value than any amount of money in this world. It is the power of the Holy Ghost. Anybody that's ever been filled with the Holy Ghost, let's give God praise. Pe people are already coming. They're already coming. If you've never been filled, would you come this morning? Receive ye the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Prayer warriors, come on up. Let's pray them through in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Receive 
Receive thee the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Come on, let's praise Him, church. God is moving. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is moving. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Pursue it, pursue it, hallelujah. 